Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. We have the confirmation that definitely United States of America want Ukraine to cease the attacks on the Russian oil refineries. We have the statement about it from the Pentagon chief Lloyd Austin. Here we have it on Twitter and also in this article as well. Here we see the direct speech. Those attacks could have knock-off effect in terms of the global energy situation. So United States are really afraid that Ukraine might disturb the global oil prices with those attacks. It is quite strange because Ukraine doesn't really disturb the oil. It disturbs the Russian fuel development like gasoline, benzene, kerosene, diesel, whatever. I do not see that this creates some some sort of the wow effect on the global oil supplies or the oil production because Russia continued to sell oil through their schemes. So kind of said that our main ally is speaking about uh, this kind of the stuff. At the same time, then Russia strikes everything in Ukraine. They still do not strike probably nuclear power plants. But other than that, Ukrainian energy, Ukrainian oil refineries and everything is just being demolished. Lloyd Austin said that for Ukraine it's better to target uh, the infrastructure of the enemy right on the front lines to have some of the tactical advantages, but come on, the fuel for the Russian tanks is being produced on the Russian oil refineries. What allies did in the Second World War? They targeted the German oil refineries, oil facilities and only that is why the Deutschland Waffe was stopped. Here Ukraine follows the same idea but there is no support from our allies. So Ukraine applied its own sanctions on Russia by targeting the Russian oil refineries but now our allies tell us that we should get rid of this very effective tool for pressing the Russian regime so now we should wait the next reaction next step from the Ukrainian officials, President Zelensky and the government what would they do in this case? Should they continue strikes on Russian oil refineries or stop? Now we do not have the military support from the United States of America, so they have no alternative to propose for Ukraine. For example, cease your strikes and we're gonna give you some sort of the military help, we're gonna vote for the package. No, they're not saying it like that. Even though in his statement Lloyd Austin asked Congress to get supplies for Ukraine, but those are just the words. Congress is up to decide. But Mike Johnson doesn't want it to decide because he doesn't want to put the bill for voting in the House. So if Ukraine stops targeting Russian oil refineries in current conditions, I would say it would be a very stupid move from Ukrainian government. Hopefully for Ukraine, Zelensky will continue the mission against the Russian oil refineries. It's the most effective tool, as I say to you. So with his statement today, Lloyd Austin confirmed that there is no any conspiracy theory behind the previous leaks to the press that the United States is against the attacks on the Russian oil refineries. No, indeed, the United States wants Ukraine to stop those attacks. I think that it should be clear for everyone right now. Is it bad? I would say yes, but we can live with it. I mean, Ukraine has still independent policy and it may continue the strikes. If I was Zelensky, for example, I would continue for sure saying that, okay, give us military support and we're gonna stop if you don't really like it that much. My friends, just a short break. If you want to support the job that I do on YouTube, please support me on Patreon. You may find the link for it in the video description just below or scan the QR code available on the screen. Thank you for your kind and awesome support of my job. So in general, around our Western partners, I would say that Macron has the only proper rhetorics towards Ukraine. Well, there are also other countries, for example, as Czech Republic, Czech president helps Ukraine a lot. Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia also help Ukraine that much. And they follow the similar politics as France does right now. But Macron was the only guy who has enough courage saying that there are no any red lines for our support of Ukraine. And for me, with this policy, it's inevitable that France would deploy their forces in Ukraine. I think that it will be a foreign legion of France. There is some certain myth in internet that France military is weak, it comes from the Second World War, the Nazi Germany was quite successful, but it all depends on the country's management by the time. Generally, the goal really changed the country from that time and 
Now the France is very powerful. It also has its own independent policy, unlike, for example, Germany, which relies on opinion across the ocean. So France is actually capable to do some of the extraordinary steps, which are not supported mainly by other allies. And Macron already said that if we send our forces to Ukraine, if they are targeted by the Russian soldiers or Russian missiles, we don't need NATO to protect us, we're gonna protect our soldiers ourselves. After analyzing all of that information, I'm sure that France will deploy its forces to Ukraine, and yes, as I said to you, I think that it will be a foreign legion of France. Officially it counts 10,000 soldiers, but it's just officially. By the way, I have one of the mates who served in Ukrainian army before, but after 2015 he moved to serve in the Foreign Legion of France and he stayed out there. Guys, probably you remember this tank from our yesterday's video. Well, today it was kaputed. Yeah, yesterday it went on successful attack, but today it was kaputed in a hunger. So yesterday's attack was the only successful and the only operation of this hangar tank and people start to call it a turtle tank. So for sure it is this particular unit. Still it wasn't targeted on the battlefield, that's why I wonder about the effectiveness of the drone jammers installed on top of this machine. Because yesterday drones weren't able to target it. The new anti-drone electronic warfare that Russia started to use could be way more effective compared to their previous modifications. Meanwhile, Russians claim that they've targeted the Ukrainian Leopard 2 tank, but it was a dummy in this case, it was confirmed by Ukrainian side, and you know this tank really looks non-standard. And actually we do not have this kind of the camouflage in Ukrainian army. But nevertheless, Russians wasted their lance and drone for this unit. Again, Ukrainian made Stugna P anti-tank missile in operation, Recently I see lots and lots of those videos appear in internet. For it was a long break since we seen those videos, it seems like Ukraine started to produce more of the Stugna piece. Russia continued to target the occupied territory of Donetsk, the Donetsk city itself. Today a huge aviation bomb Fab 1500 hit the local store. Luckily it didn't explode. Luckily I mean because after all it is a civilian infrastructure with lots of the civilians around. So I wonder what could have happened if this bomb exploded in a place. I think that Russia would blame Ukraine for this, but Russia is using aviation gliding bombs, Fab 1500, Ukraine uses JTAMs. That's why it is a Russian aviation bomb for sure. The Mad Max style continues. Russia started to use uh, lots of the bikes on the front lines. It helps them to be more mobile. Yes, there is no any armor, but those bikes are really fast and able to cover hard terrain if they use enduro types of the motorcycles. Then I was in Ukraine, we also had those kind of the idea with our motorcycle friends to purchase the Enduro motorcycles to the front lines. By that time Russians were very close to Kyiv, so the idea was to use the motorcycle with some sort of the anti-tank tool on it, approach the targeting distance, launch missile or whatever and disappear from the place at the same motorcycle. But unfortunately the anti-tank tool is very heavy, I mean the effective anti-tank tool like Javelin or Enlo able to kaput the tank from a single shell, from a single missile. So we left this idea aside because it didn't work. Those motorcycles could be only used for surveillance missions and basically to move around for infantry. As for the anti-tank units, you can only take RPG but it's not really effective against the modern Russian tanks. Alright, it seems like the Russian military bloggers already know that there will be a new mobilization in Russia. They say that it will be in May. Let me show you the English variant. So here we go, mobilization in May. I know the number, I won't voice it out probably. I recommend everyone to prepare equipment, medicine, physics. If you have your own department, they mean the particular squadron, friends, whatever, let them prepare your attitude, already attitude, it means they may call you for service in particular units. It means that if you want to serve with your friends, you can go for it already. Knowing the figure of potentially mobilized uh, soldiers, we can confidently say that if there is no any agreements between Russia and Ukraine, the opponents are in trouble. 
he means that the Ukraine is in trouble. Well, we'll see because Ukraine also has announced a new mobilization this year, but Ukraine now really struggles with the mobilization process, not because Ukrainians are not willing to defend their country, but because this program, I mean the process from the legislation perspective, is very stupid in Ukraine. Plus, it is not followed by Ukrainian officials, MPs and other persons who have money. Well, mobilization issue in Ukraine is the topic of the separate video. Here I just want to say that if Russia wants, it might create a huge meat wave from new mobilized soldiers and Ukraine would obviously need to retreat from its territories on the east or on the south or maybe even near to the Kharkiv city, because the population of the Russian Federation is at least six times more compared to Ukraine nowadays. And I have absolutely no doubts that Putin will announce a new massive mobilization of Russians. By the way, about Kharkiv today, President Zelensky said that Russia has ambitious plans to take that city under control, but he didn't say when Russia plans this operation. Could be this year due the well-advertised Russian attack could be aimed for Kharkiv, but Budanov said that, that they will expand the bridgehead on the east, trying to occupy all of the Donetsk Oblast. However, we may spot that Ukraine is getting ready for this possible scenario near Kharkiv, near Kyiv, and uh, we see lots of those kind of the videos online on X, on Telegram and other platforms. Hopefully those defense lines are robust enough to sustain the Russian attack. A Krokos City Hall attack once again. What could be more cringy compared to the previous Russian versions? Well, today they came out with a new one. Their investigators, so-called, said that the funds for those attackers were sent by a Ukrainian oil company Burisma Holding. You might recall the scandal around this company involving Hunter Biden, the son of Joe Biden. So now Russian investigators are saying that United States and personally Joe Biden is responsible for the attack in the Krokos City Hall. They organized everything via Burisma. Oh my god, what a nonsense. And you know what makes me not angry but kind of frustrated because the United States actually warned Russia that guys, you will have some of the imminent threat on your territory. You need to take care, call your FSB to act right now. We now have the information that the United States intelligence even warned Russia that the attack will take place in particular building in the Krokus City Hall and Russia didn't do anything about it. And now they blame the United States. Well, clearly it is the influence into the United States politics accusing Joe Biden for that. Obviously, 100% some of the Trump supporters would take this theory as a legit one. That Joe Biden is evil and Trump needs to end this conflict with Russia. Otherwise, as Elon Musk says, it will bring us to the Third World War. So Putin really plays in favor of Trump with this version, even though he officially said before that he would like to see Biden as a next president of the United States, but clearly we see that he doesn't want it to happen. This summer there could be some sort of the peace conference between many of the countries, including possibly Russia and China. Well, Ukraine at this stage is against participation of the Russian Federation in this deal, but Ukraine wants China to be present. However, however, China says that probably they will not go without Russia. It is kind of the complicated and I think that the peace deal is not possible, at least at this stage. Ukraine and Russia are now without the major military resource to turn the situation on the front lines in their favor. That's why countries start to talk about some sort of the peace deal. Nevertheless, President Zelensky, as always, continued to say that the peace agreement with Russia is not possible. Otherwise, Russia would use the break just in their favor and continue the attack. But Ukraine will lose a critical support that we still have, for example, from the European Union countries. But you know, there is only one scenario how Russia might turn the situation on the front lines in their favor. Well, they need to mobilize more than a million soldiers immediately and start a massive attack. Yes, they would have absolutely crazy losses, probably the heaviest losses in their history. I mean, if you speak about the territorial gains compared to the losses, but with this mighty force, they might cause Ukraine to start 
thing about possible agreements with Russia. Because in this case, Ukraine would start to lose lots of the territories. Hopefully, it wouldn't happen. Great news from the United States of America. They intercepted the Iranian ship with military cargo. There were tens of the Kalashnikovs inside and anti-tank weaponry too. And all of that will go to Ukraine right now. So definitely it is a great job done by the United States because they not only help Ukraine with this cargo, but they also help other allies by not letting this weaponry to go, for example, to Hamas militants or to Houthis. Guys, okay, so and now let's go for today's military map update. So today Russia moved from Tenenke, expanding the gray area and also in Pervomaisk. The advancement is quite... So it is yesterday and it is today. You see, potentially, this is the area where Russia will be in a couple of days. Before they fell with their attack from Tenenke, but now they concentrate more forces and probably there is one more strike from their side. Also, the advancement from Peromaisk is quite significant. So yesterday, today, I think they captured all of the Peromaisk. Plus, on the north over here, they advanced with their red zone. So they've took those couple of the tree lines and the field under their control reaching this boundary of the river. If we go to Krasnogorovka, northern part of it, also there is a Russian advancement. They aim for Nova Kalinova. So in a very short perspective, Russia would be able to take control over this area. I think this month for sure. So the statement from President Zelensky, which he made a couple of days ago, that Russian forces were stopped in the eastern part of Ukraine. No, it doesn't fit reality. We see that Russia advances quite a lot taking the ground. Plus, if they announce a new mobilization, potentially, yes, they might be even more successful. Sadly for Ukraine, the only option we need to resist is the support from our allies, at first from the United States of America. Again, Russia moved in Novomikhailovka yesterday and today. Here, the advancement of the Russian army is really slow compared to Avdiivka direction. There are many other hotspots, but without major changes directly on this military map. Guys, please don't forget to press your huge like. Guys, please don't forget to press your. Guys, please don't forget to press your huge like to this video. By doing so, you help me a lot. And also, as usual, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are, and have a great time.